What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and today, courtesy of the guys at Viper.net, I have the opportunity to be the very first to showcase the Dragon Ball A11. And I'm sure most of you are aware, but for those that are not, we are talking about the brand new ASIC that mines both Alephium and Radium. And according to Hashrate.no, it is currently sitting in fourth place as the most profitable ASIC that you can have currently sitting at $37.27 a day in profit at $0.10 cents per kilowatt hour. With a hash rate of 3.2 terahash on Radiant and 1.2 terahash on Alephium, we are garnering approximately $42 a day in revenue on RxD and $7.92 a day in revenue on Alephium, with power consumption sitting at about 2300 watts. Now that we have an opportunity to play with this thing, we're going to see if those numbers are accurate. But in order to do that, we're going to need to get this thing set up for the very first time. So let me demonstrate to you how to get your Dragon Ball A11 logged into and set up. So the first thing you need to do is find the IP address that this machine is sitting on your network and navigate to it in your browser. Once you do that, you're going to be presented with some Chinese writing here. And essentially what this is asking you for is your password. You're going to enter the default password in there, and I do recommend that you change that. And since you probably don't know Chinese, you've got to pick between these two options here. The blue one is going to be yes, followed by a second one with confirmation, and again, you just simply click the blue button. Now, this machine is currently already running, and we're going to go through setup, but notice in the upper right-hand corner, you can switch between Alephium and RxD. So next I'm going to navigate to the minor configuration tab and here is where we're going to enter in our pool URL followed by our wallet address and if we currently have a password for this pool you're going to need to enter that as well. Now pay no attention to what you see here this is just simply allowing us to set difficulty as we get used to this machine and Viper.net figures out the VAR diff or perhaps the proper difficulty level for this machine to maximize your revenue and profits. Now for both Alephium and Radiant, you have a lot of different pull options to choose from. And since Viper was so generous in providing this machine for testing, we're going to go with Viper.net. And in order to get the pull stratum information, I'm just simply going to go to Viper.net and then we're going to select Start Mining on Alephium. And then you want to scroll down and find your appropriate region. Now once you select that, you're going to have several different options to copy and paste. Now in this case, notice we are using the full Stratum Plus TCP USSE Viper.net 5050. Make sure that at the end of your wallet address, you add a period followed by your worker name. Now notice that we're currently on the General Settings tab here, but if you scroll on over to Advanced Settings, Notice that we do have some overclock settings here, and by default, there are three boards that are all set to the maximum frequency possible. Now, you can go all the way down to 400 megahertz, but if you want the highest hash rate possible, 700 is probably going to be your best bet. Once you've finished making those changes, be sure to hit Save and Apply. And then next, you want to go up to the upper right-hand corner and switch from Alephium to Radiant. We're going to go into the Minor Configuration tab here, and then we're going to do the same as we did before and set up our Stratum, our wallet, worker name, and or password if you're using one. Once again, we'll hit Save and Apply. And then from this point, what you want to start looking out for is your power consumption. This power consumption number will start out very low and ramp up and should take several minutes before you get to just a little bit over 2000 watts. At that point, you should start seeing hash rate populate in module one, module two, and module three, and of course you should have a total. I should point out that these are the hash rates for Alephium, and if we drop this down and select RxD, it's going to display the hash rates on Radiant. Now, in order for me to have access to this machine, the guys at Viper.net opened up some ports and allowed me to get in here to tinker with this. However, because of that, we did notice something extremely important that I should point out if you do plan on accessing your machine remotely, and that is that when you switch between Alephium and RxD, your IP address does change. It's very important to know. 
So under our minor status page here, you're going to see your primary pool information in spot zero, and then your wallet address followed by your worker name, the status of the device, the difficulty, your get works, your accepted shares, and your rejected shares. Then we have a summary tab showing the time that the miner has been up, the real-time hash rate, and the average hash rate. On our power consumption, we're going to show our voltage as well as our current. And just a little pro tip for you guys that didn't know, your current times your voltage is going to give you your wattage. So in this case, 13.99 times 152 equals 2,126 watts, which is pretty close to what we're seeing on our power consumption. This is going to fluctuate a little bit. You've also got your three fans on the ASIC itself, fan 1 at 4,400 RPM, fan 2 at 4,300, and fan 3 at 4,300, and fan 4 at 4,400. And closer to the bottom here, any warnings or the log is going to show in this box here. Also, if we go over to our modules tab here, we can see each board individually what our temperature is and the hash rate as well as the receive and rejected rates. We also have a separate tab for the minor log. You also have a network settings tab that you can go in here and change from DHCP to static, set your own IP address if you prefer. Systems tab is going to give us an overview of the miner type, the model number, the firmware, etc. But you do also have a reboot button here as well. And I should point out, we also have a restart button up here at the top. And once you switch over to the Radiant tab, you notice that you do lose the Network tab and the System tab. However, you can navigate back to the Alephium page in order to get those. So here I've got Radiant as well as Alephium pulled up on Viper.net. And we're going to take a look at how this machine has been performing over the last 12 hours. So we got this going at roughly about midnight last night and the time of recording right now is roughly about 12 in the afternoon. So currently it's showing $5.29 estimated over the course of 24 hours at 1.06 terahash, but over the course of the last 12 hours, we are sitting at $2.78. If we were solo mining, our time to find would be approximately two hours and 57 minutes or about three hours. Now let's go ahead and switch over to Radiant and see how we're doing there. It's currently showing $39.53 on the estimated over the course of 24 hours, and at the 12 hour mark we are sitting at $19.54. Now one thing that I did notice is our hash rate fluctuates a lot less on Radiant than it does compared to Alephium. Now the big question is, are we getting the advertised performance from Dragon Ball? And in this case, again, they're saying 3.2 terahash at 2300 watts on Radiant and 1.2 terahash at that existing 2300 watts on Alephium. So prior to pointing this A11 at my own wallet, we can take a look at what it was doing on a wallet provided by Viper. And you can see our average here, which is the white line, would typically stay at around 3.2 terahash over the course of the 12 hours that it was on there previously. And if we look at the blue line here on the effective hash rate, it does typically stay around that 3.2 terahash mark. Now it's gonna take a little while for our average to catch up with us. And again, as far as Alephium is concerned, we're ranging anywhere from 1.03 terahash all the way up to 1.5 terahash. So the 3.2 terahash and the 1.2 terahash is looking to be pretty accurate now how about the 2300 watts? Well, surprisingly, this particular unit is coming in a little bit under expectations as far as power consumption, which is a good thing. We're currently sitting at 2143. Over the course of the last 12 hours as I've been watching this thing, I don't believe I've seen it get over 2200 watts. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you would know that I have had some expectations on this particular device being able to dual mine as opposed to having multiple boards mining different things simultaneously. And from what I can tell, with it showing to have three modules total, I think what we're looking at here is in fact dual mining. But in order to really get to the bottom of this, we need to open up the machine and take a look at these boards to see what we have. Is it three boards or is it six boards that look like three boards. Now I don't have this machine in my possession, but I was very fortunate that 
Iota Pie did in fact remove the fan so that we could get a look at the boards inside of here and I believe this is confirmation that there are in fact only three boards and considering when we're in the user interface we only see three boards for both Alephium and Radiant I do believe that is confirmation that this is in fact dual mining on each individual board which may be a first I know there's been some ASICs out there that have dual mined but in the past what they're doing is they're utilizing different boards for different algorithms whereas this one is using a single board for multiple algorithms which is very interesting to say the least this is in fact a first if that is the case but I think we need to get a little bit more confirmation perhaps Dragon Ball if you're watching this video if you can in fact confirm whether or not this is dual mining on a single board or if you're doing some kind of weird magic and utilizing some of the chips for one algorithm and some for the others that would be great so that's going to wrap it up for this video guys i appreciate each and every one of you for watching all the way through to the end be sure to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you on the next one